Okay, <clears throat> we're still working on the first part of the syllabus here. This we're going to talk about the other option you have for two ghost interpreting. And that is um, up to three observations of working interpreters, which provide 30 bonus points, or if it makes more sense for you to do that instead of some of the ghost interpreting, you, you, you know, you just won't do all of the ghost interpreting. Let's talk about that, but we're going to also talk about there are activities in Canvas that are semantics awareness tests, or SATs. Uh, semantics awareness tests have video footage of Pat Grable generating a sign. And your text on the Canvas screen has three sentences with a highlighted or asterisked word that is supposed to be a best choice for the sign given. And for example, we might have um, three sentences which use the English word right, R-I-G-H-T. And so we can talk about a right-hand turn, the right to vote, and the right answer to a question. And those would be, one of those signs would be provided, uh, and therefore you see this one, and you would choose uh, the choice which fits the idea of a correct answer. Okay? And so the other two distractors don't fit. However, if you do all of these, you'll eventually see signs for all of the distractors, which means that there are about 450 signs. There's, um, it's not a complete, it's more like 448 signs are actually shown if you do everything because there's some overlap and repetition in a couple cases. Regardless, that's a lot of vocabulary for you to get your mind wrapped around. And so I want you to take all of these, and they're each worth individually. They're identified as two and a half points. You don't get to keep those two and a half points, but you lose two and a half points if you don't do them, right? Okay, so you'll see the scores, but because it's going to end up being 0% of your grade, uh, they won't actually calculate in the end, um, but I will be able to know whether you did the work that you didn't. And these are the one thing that will disappear if you don't do them in time, because there's so many of them. I don't want you to try to do them in the last minute, because that's not the point. So... Um, you won't be able to wait till the end of the class to do them all. You need to start doing them earlier. Now you could do them all early. Um, I, I don't. I'm not, I'm not preventing you from getting them all done in the first week if you wanted to. But regardless, you can't get them all done in the last week because there'll only be a few left available for you to do in the last week. And that's a whole bunch of negative 2.5s that will be against you. So don't let those get past you. Okay, so we've already talked about that. Let's talk about this other option of bonus points. Because um, I, I want you to do things. I want you to get involved in the deaf community. you got to network. you got to find your potential mentors down the line. And one of the best ways to do that is to observe them while they're working. Uh, so that they get to know who you are, rather than just sending an email and hoping that somebody answers. They're not going to. And if you've tried that, you found out that us interpreters don't respond to emails because, like, I don't know who you are. Uh, and especially today with scams going on, it's like, I really don't know who you are. So if I haven't met you or have a personal reference to, to who you are, I'm not going to invite you to, to see my work. That's me. That's private stuff. That's my professional um, uh, practice. And I can't have strangers that I don't know uh, coming along unless I've screened them. And that means I need to meet you before you just show up at my work. So meet interpreters, and then you can talk about, hey, can I observe your work? And if you don't know how to do that, We've got all kinds of degrees here. You've got criminal justice and social work. Find something else to do because uh, and maybe interpreting is not a good fit. And you can use your ASL skills in some other field. And you hadn't thought about that before. And now's a great time to think about it. Well, actually, now's past the time to think about it. But it's still a good time to think about it if, if it's not a good fit. Uh, move on into something else. So here's, here's the information about uh, observing interpreters, right? You should know what it is that you're getting trained to do. So at some point you need if you don't have if you don't know any interpreters, why are you studying this field? Right. I mean I hope somebody who's who's in med school knows some doctors before they ever applied, right? <clears throat> so if this is hitting home, you, you can uh, let me have a conversation with you. We'll, we'll see what other options are out there for you. Um, I want to graduate professionals in the field. I don't want to graduate people who just wanted to complete their degree because it got started in ASL. If you're not going to be working as an interpreter, let's study something else. 
but if you are and you want to look at interpreters, do this. Okay, so first you have to have a mutually agreed observation. Okay, um, now I'm not expecting that you'll have particular observations on campus, but at least this would apply to any college or school environment that you have to have the student, the interpreter, and the instructor agree to do an observation in the classroom environment. And I don't care whether that's public school, um, a workshop, or a uh, college course. Okay, that's just being polite and not you know not surprising an instructor. Uh, when two people show up when they're only expecting one, or three people show up when they're only expecting two. Um, it's, I would say it's, it's proper for um, the person you're observing to introduce you as uh, a, uh, well, you could use the word mentor, uh, an intern, a protege, um, you know, somebody who's supposed to be there. Rather than, oh, here's a stranger I just met yesterday and they tagging along. Okay, uh, if you're in a public school system, you probably have to get um, some extra approval. And you would know whether you need to or not by asking the person you observe. Hey, uh, do I need to have any special permissions to be able to come in and, and, and observe you? A lot of times visitors need to have uh, criminal background checks, uh, unless they're family. Right? If mom and dad are coming to visit, they, they, can, <laughs> they can avoid the back criminal background check. Of course, if they have a criminal record, they might not be allowed to visit. Okay, you get the idea. Um, if you are working with an agency, the interpreter you're observing is working with an agency, the agency might need to have you separately approved. And that might be an extra step, and that might mean that you have to visit with the agency, um, and then they could approve for you to go, and they might not approve you to go for anything. Uh, you know, if it's a private consultation, say it's a patient and a doctor, that's less likely to be something that people would approve you to be observing. If it's a more of a public forum, um, the interpreter's interpreting for a play or interpreting for, you know, at a sporting event that's open to the public and you have a deaf player on the team that's being, having interpreting services, whatever it would be. Those are more likely to be observable events. Nonetheless, if it's out of school, tread lightly and don't expect people to open the door for you unless you've talked to them in advance. So here I just talked about the public performances are more likely. So you're looking to observe a paid professional doing professional services. Are they volunteering in church? Okay, be careful with that, because just because they are raising their hands and being busy doesn't mean they're being good at what they're doing. So are they a licensed interpreter in the state of Alabama or otherwise credentialed in some way? Then they're probably worth observing. If they're not, that's a risk. You might observe bad practices, and we want you to see proper practices of professional interpreting, preferably somebody who's certified, uh, but at least someone who's licensed in Alabama, and if you're in a state without licensure, then I'm going to say they should be certified, because that's the one measure that I don't need to necessarily see an individual's work to say that they would be safe. If they have a certification, they're either safe or if they're not safe, something's happened since they got certified. Um, and I'm thinking brain trauma, because uh, usually if you're safe, you know, you stay safe for your career. So um, part of it, uh, this idea is that you get familiar with the expectations and behaviors of professional interpreting. Uh, and also part is to meet professionals and network with them. And maybe you see if you like them and maybe you don't. And so you say, well, thank you very much. And you move on. Uh, but maybe you find somebody that, like, you know, I kind of like your person, you know, the way you treat things, the conversations we had were pleasant. Um, maybe, you know, would you be interested in letting me work with you some more in the future to accomplish some of the requirements for my courses, such as practicum courses or internship courses? You will need a mentor for the internship. Um, you will also need other interpreters to work with. And so you don't have to, uh, you know, you need one mentor. But you might still you you need to have more than one person in, in your list of, of uh, people you can work with and observe. Okay, so what are you going to look at? You're going to look at their process. What did they do? How did they get from the source text to the target text? Right? We already talked about that. Um, that here's interpreting. Right? This is the magic. This is the mystery. This is what it is always worth asking questions about. The source text said this. Right? Source text said this, and you did that. 
proving that you were paying attention. And I was wondering, how did you do that? What was the thought process behind that? Why did you do that and not something else that you might have thought of? Um, usually interpreters are pretty keen to do that because it's like, oh, you noticed that, huh? Well, I learned that trick from so-and-so way back in whatever year it was. And what I saw was that this means this and that means the other thing. And you'll have probably uh, very active conversations about the process of interpreting and get some insight as to what a professional interpreter does and what you need to do as well. Great, so you do all of that. How do you tell me that you've done all of that? You submit your report in a OneDrive folder um, and you mark the submission that it exists in the Canvas uh, system. And um, actually, no, you can probably upload it into the Canvas system outright. This, this, this is expecting that I don't have the Canvas operating, and we do. So, but what does it have to include? Okay, so it's for each observation, it's only up to 10 bonus points. Just do all these things and you get 10 bonus points. Don't do them all and I get to pick and choose how many points you get. Um, so who did you observe? Yes, I do need to know who it was. When were the dates and times? And where? What's the actual name of the facility? I do not need to know the name of the deaf person. I do not need to know the name of the hearing person. I do not need to know such details that would be sufficient for me to figure out those things. But I do need to know these elements. Um, and just so that I have a sense of well, what kind of experiences have you exposed yourself to. So what were the topics? So uh, what did you, who did you observe? Um, I observed the interpreter, right? Interpreter Mary Jones. When? Monday, October 5th, from uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Where? Medical Center. Okay, or, you know, uh, okay, Hopkins Medical Center, whatever. Now, <clears throat> I don't know which doctor you were interpreting for, or if it was a doctor. I don't know which patient you were interpreting for, or maybe, no, well, I'm assuming a patient. Topics, what did you learn? <clears throat> I learned about, and you can just list them, right? Uh, um, review of uh, past, uh, past history, like you have a future history. Review of your medical history, uh, and uh, medications being taken, uh, taking of blood pressure, temperature, uh, you know, standard um, stuff you do in a regular office, weight. Um, what are you here to see the doctor about today? Okay. Uh, and then vocabulary and processing professional practices. Okay, I didn't know the sign for blood pressure. Now I have a sign for blood pressure. Okay. Um, I didn't know the sign for whatever it would be. Um, and so you, you can identify the things that you learned. You don't have to teach me what the vocabulary is, but if you can identify what things were interesting and that you learned. What about the processing? Um, was this a consecutive simultaneous processing? Which things were consecutive? Which things were simultaneous? Uh, was there any site translation? Were there any documents that needed to be put into ASL for the deaf person to know what they were assigning or what their medical history questions were? Um, how did the interpreter negotiate? Did they um, arrange the room in any way? Did they change who was seating where? Did they adjust the lighting or or move something away from being backlit with the window behind them, or something like that? Uh, did they adjust to where they stood so that they would or wouldn't see certain parts during an examination, right? Um, everybody's got your parts, and you can stand close enough that I don't have to see those parts, or I can stand far enough away so that if there's some kind of cover, I can still see your face, but I don't need to see any other parts, right? Um, or maybe we leave the room um, because we know what the doctor's going to do and there's basic stuff and we can turn our head and cough and all that stuff without me being there to tell you to turn your head and cough. And so I'll just be right outside this door and uh, open it up when you're done and ready for me to come back in. And if you all agree to that ahead of time, that's fine. That's You're reasonably accommodating your deaf patient during a physical exam. So that's it. Just, you know, who did you... who? Who, when, and where did you go? And then what happened? What did you learn? There you go. That's the task. Write it all up uh, and submit it into the Canvas system so that I know that, that it's there for me to look at. And then uh, we'll uh, score it accordingly. And uh, you may do that up to three times. Um, and you can choose to do that instead of ghost interpreting, in addition to ghost interpreting. I, I'm a great fan of throwing bonus points out at you because I want you to do the extra. 
I want you to go the extra mile. I want you to meet interpreters. There's a method to the madness here. Um, please participate. And we'll move on to the next piece on the next video.